Hi everyone, uh, it's Max here for some pre-show announcements. Uh, first of all, first and foremost, welcome Brett. Well, you know, <laughs> it's okay to be back, I That's guess. good. Um, if I weren't getting paid all the money, I wouldn't be That's here. completely Yo, fair. what the fuck? Yeah, uh, anyway. I've been asking for a paycheck for about three months now. We're gonna move right past that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> So that that's the good news. Now here's here's some of the bad news. Uh, first and foremost, apologies if the quality of this uh, on my and Beth's end sounds off. That's because it is. Not um, my end. I'm very quality. Mark got the flu, so the equipment is quarantined at his house. Beth and I are speaking into the same microphone, like a couple of professionals. Not me. I have my own mic. Um, and second of all, apologies that this isn't the finale of Status Quo. Um. Because Mark got the flu. <laughs> but you know what? We're committed to delivering you top quality content. So now let me take you on a magical journey back in time by like a week and a half uh, while we explore some wonderful shenanigans. Brett, if it's okay with you, would you mind if we hold off on introducing your character for a little bit? Because I'd kind of like to set it up as a surprise. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I do want to say one thing. Uh, I want to apologize if my uh, my voice for this character like just changes constantly <laughs> because I have only been working on this voice for like two weeks and then suddenly this came up. So here we go. Okay, so we're gonna be running two scenes concurrently um, inside of Harvey's Hotel Version Two in Sinsaba. Uh, and we open with Dandy and Louisa. Uh, it's the middle of the the uh, fourth arc in between. So before all of the shenanigans with William and kidnapping and all that good stuff have happened, um, the two of you find yourselves enjoying just each other's company. <laughs> Louisa has been uh, extremely busy. She's sort of like just accepted this role of like... Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, like a manager around the hotel, uh, whether or not Harvey uh, is, agrees with, with her title is is another matter entirely. Well, but Harvey's not around to tell her no. That's very true. He's been doing his own stuff. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, this is, this is one of the first uh, times in a while where the two of you have just really been able to sit down and just have a chat. Uh-huh. What's it like? What should I ask Louisa? What do you, whatever you want to ask. You know what? Louisa, I don't think we've ever really talked about your family too much. Like, do you have any brothers or sisters or anything? Yeah, I, well, I, I was an only child, I guess. Um, my family, we never really got along. Um, she, mom was always, uh, you know, doing, doing the household chores, complaining that I never did anything. Dad was kind of a, well, bum, sorry. Uh, oh. And that's kind of why I left. Um, that's why you found me in a cult. Oh, God. I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to bring up a sore subject or anything. No, it's okay. Listen, it's really nice that we can have these times together. I Yeah. Can I ask you something, though? Yeah. This, I'm sorry, this is probably going to sound really bad. I, I'm, I shouldn't be thinking this. No, it's okay. W what? You do these incredible things and you go on these amazing adventures constantly and i know they're they're dangerous and I, they're probably not really good for you sorry sweetie but <laughs> you know like you're out there and you're you're really seeing the world and, and making friends with all these incredible people do you ever are you ever just like bummed that i'm no. with you no oh my god no listen listen louisa and she like takes her hands and looks her really hard in the eyes she's like listen it is, this is something that I, I'm, I'm glad I'm doing and it, it, it's, it's, it's nice, 
and all, but it's so fucking awful all the time. And it's so nice to come home, like home to someone who's normal and safe and okay. And I, I, I don't think I've ever told you this before. And I'm sorry if this is a little fast, but like, I love you. I love you, Louisa. And I, I don't want to be with anyone else. There's I, no one has ever made me feel as uh, comfortable or, or just safe as you do. Um, she looks at you with like a, a quivering smile, oh. um, wipes a tear from her eye and, and rushes like across the dining room table to was, embrace you. I was, oh, okay. I was like, I was holding her hands. Oh, were you? Yeah. Shit. Okay. Well, she just gives you a big hug then. Fuck. Yes. Continuity. Um, and meanwhile, we cut to the outside of, uh, Harvey's Haunted Hotel version two as a, uh, a black car pulls up alongside of it. Georgie, are you driving or do you have a driver? Yeah, yes. Yeah, Georgie's driving. He's driving a Studebaker touring car. No, no, okay. no, this is not Georgie Porgy. <laughs> Brett, Brett does not listen to this podcast enough to know who Georgie Porgy is. <laughs> I, don't um, listen enough. I don't remember who Georgie Porgy was. Um, yeah, so you, you park the car outside and uh, you take a look at the building. This was the address that you were told the private investigator worked at. Uh, however, just staring at it, you're a little put off by the fact that this building is undeniably shaped like a giant penis. Um, the, the lettering on like the, the front of it reads, uh, Harvey's Haunted Hotel. However, you do have to wonder exactly what makes it so haunted. Well, uh, I'm going to have to say that Georgie doesn't believe in haunting thing things and is just like, fuck it. And he walks right in. So you walk in to a, uh, a pile of fake cobwebs. Um, and as you brush them aside, you take in this, this uh, gothic interior um, that looks like if like some sort of corporation got their hands on the word spooky and just really tried to deck out the interior of this hotel uh, with that in mind. The uh, lobby actually has a fair few people in it. Um, most notably, you see what looks like a young woman who appears to be trying to consume some sort of makeup product. <laughs> um <laughs> And as your eyes uh, travel further throughout the the lobby, um, they rest upon what you would guess would be like the uh, the check in desk. Um, there is a tall blonde woman who looks like she would rather be anywhere else uh, than behind that desk, and she turns to you and says, "Checking in." Hey, doll. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm looking in for uh, a girl named Dandy. Oh, good lord. Uh, do you happen to know where she might be? Yes, I... What is your business with Dandy, exactly? Ugh. I got a, got a little business, you know? <laughs> yes, I think I hear her right now. If you'll excuse me, I just, I'll page the dining room real quick. And the uh, tall blonde woman turns away, uh, picks, up a, picks up a phone. And Dandy, the... Uh, the uh, you know, inner line inside of the dining room starts ringing. What am I doing? Uh, you're hugging Louisa. Just hugging. Uh, I'll... <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It's up to the audience's interpretation, I suppose. Listen, <laughs> kissing is fun. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, I mean, I... listen, you guys can be sharing a smooch. That's fine. Oh, yeah, sure. I wasn't going anywhere else with okay, that. That's the dining room. <laughs> Uh, no, I was just the blonde like... woman walks in and they're all butt ass naked. There are six people in there, all butt ass naked. <laughs> just two people, just naked on the floor, and there's like three other people just eating dinner. <laughs> yeah. um, do you do you do you go over and uh, pick up the phone? Okay, I let it ring a few times, and then I'm like, uh, all right, hold on, and then I go answer the phone. Hello, front desk calling. Just kidding, it's me, Howie. Oh, hey, what's up, Howie? The Hey, listen. Uh huh. Are you involved with dangerous people? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to alarm you. I think the mob is looking for you. Some sort of some sort of organized crime organization. Uh, uh, you know what? Hang on one. Hang on one second. And uh, 
The blonde woman turns to you, Georgie, and says, Name, please? Ah, my name's Georgie. Okay, hold on. What a, what a darling. She turns back. <laughs> Do you owe money to someone named Georgie? Um, no. I don't, I don't know a Georgie. Also, I've never dealt with the mob. I just, like, I met, like, Harvey and, like, monsters and shit. Uh, I turn to Louisa and I'm like, Louisa! Have I ever dealt with the mob? She shrugs. Okay, I guess we'll be right there. Can you uh, let him know uh, very nicely that weapons are not allowed inside the hotel, just in case? And I will uh, also conceal my gun uh, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. Wait, weapons aren't allowed inside of here? Oh, no, they still- I gotta go. No, how And she hangs up the phone. God damn it. Um, <laughs> the, the, the woman turns back to you uh, and you see her- completely unstealthily like <laughs> remove a pistol from like under the counter and slide it uh like you know just like into her back belt and she says sir i'm gonna have to say that there are no weapons allowed inside the premises we are all asked to relinquish any sort of firearms knives what have you when we enter here and i'm afraid i'm going to have to ask you to also follow those rules <laughs> hey what makes you think uh georgie's got uh, any weapons on him uh, she looks you up and down and just sort of stares at you. <laughs> just so we're clear, Georgie is wearing a very nice suit. Yeah, so like a 1920s gangster. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she like, she holds out her hand and sort of just wiggles her fingers. Weapons, please. He, he, uh, he walks up and he, he slowly reaches his hand into his breast pocket, uh, and pulls out a well i guess it's not his breast pocket but it's it's right under his jacket and he pulls out a 32 automatic and hands it to her you're gonna shoot your dick off with this thing (laughs) she uh (laughs) places it uh under the counter where she originally removed her pistol from (laughs) uh by this point dandy you have arrived in the lobby great i um i look around and i spot howie and this unknown figure and i'm like smooth my coat down and uh, sort of like walk with purpose. Okay. Uh, do you want to roll appearance to back up your walk? Yeah. We haven't rolled appearance in a hot second. I really hope I roll hot. <laughs> I want to be hot. Well, in this case, you're not rolling to be hot. You're just rolling to walk with purpose. Ooh, no. Uh, what was my appearance? Oh, no, I failed. Okay, uh, so Dandy, you walk in, you you identify the figure, and then you immediately trip over a chair. Uh, you don't, like, fall or anything, but you stumble, uh, and then you sort of, like, have to hop on one foot to regain balance. As I want to you... push the roll. Okay! <laughs> I got a six. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Which is an extreme success. Time reverses itself, and Dandy, you do a skip hop into the room and stroll over. Your chest is puffed. You are ready for business. No, I just want to look hot. Okay, you look hot. <laughs> uh, Georgie, what? can you give me a, a just a quick rundown of your appearance? Uh, Georgie, he's probably like, I don't know, a little under six foot tall. Uh, I'm taller he... than you. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh... <laughs> He's kind of starting to gray a bit, you know. He's not a he's not a, a fat guy, but you can see he's enjoyed his fair share of uh, food. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, he's got he's got like brown, but like or black, but with like like salt and pepper hair going on, uh, with no facial hair. Uh, and he's wearing a nice uh, nice dark uh, suit, and he's got a suitcase at his side as well. Okay. And I think that's everything that's important. Cool. So, uh, Georgie... Oh, and he's got a felt fedora on. He has a felt fedora. I forgot okay. about that one. Brett, I love you, but you never cease to disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I'm not this... trying to make my, my people sexy. I'm not I'm trying to be sexy. sexy. enough I'm for just, this as just, is. Well, I'm not, okay? Listen, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> push through. <laughs> um... No, it's fine. Listen, this was before uh, fedoras became uh, tool machines. Yeah, the only reason he has a fedora is because it's cool at the time. Is it purple? Is it purple? It's it's dark gray. It matches the suit. Okay. Listen, I mean, I'm just imagining, like, purple felt from, like, a craft (laughs) store. All right. So, you, uh, you, Georgie, you see this attractive uh, and extremely tall 
a woman walk over to you with confidence. Uh, Georgie turns to Howie and says, Hey, if it's gonna be a little while before Dandy shows up, maybe I'll go check out that girl over there. Howie says, Oh, you mean my friend Dandy? Dandy looks uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. (laughs) Uh, I've cleared conference room A if you two would like to just go talk about whatever this is. Yeah. Uh, She looks nervously at you. She's like, hello, sir. Uh, I'm Dandy. Nice to meet you. She sticks out her hand. Hey, I'm Georgie. Georgie Miller. And he reaches out his hand and, and shakes hers. Neato. Uh, if you'd follow me, I can lead us to the conference room. Thanks. Thank you, Howie. Yeah. And she like put, places one hand on your shoulder, Dandy, and leans in close and says, I grabbed his gun. You're in the clear. And then she uh, pats you on the shoulder and like slightly taps you on your way. Yeah. Dandy uh, sort of like grins nervously. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Dandy, you lead the way over to conference room A. Uh, the two of you are seated in privacy, and Georgie, you have a problem. Well, you see here, little Miss Dandy, I, I hear you're good at finding people. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, I can find people, sure. Well, you see here, I got a friend who uh, we haven't seen in a while. Uh-huh. And uh, a friend of mine... Needs a favor from this friend. Uh-huh. This friend, not too big fan of, uh, you know, the, the popo. So, <laughs> we gotta keep all this. Um, Mr. Georgie, I am absolutely more than happy to work with you. Uh, however, uh, I just, and uh, no offense intended here or anything, just in case, but, like, I just want to make one thing extremely clear. Uh, I do not deal in murder. So, if murder is involved in your, um, problem, uh, I don't, I don't do that. But, if you do need well, help Well, listen. Getting, what? I will not be doing any murdering <laughs> of this friend. <laughs> this friend will not be murdered by me. <laughs> <laughs> He's changing. His voice is shifting right before our eyes. <laughs> Murdered. <laughs> Should name you Sven. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, uh, just to be clear, every once in a while, uh, I might have to say Georgie because that is the <laughs> phrase that gets me back into that's that voice. Completely so completely fine. I understand a hundred percent. Okay. Um. No, that's that's totally fine. Uh, as long as there isn't murder involved and also torture. Uh, or most um, uh, violence, maybe. But, like, like, listen, listen. I am not the police, and I have s- seen my fair share of uh, stuff. So if you would like to be a bit more specific, uh, I promise that I have no interest in involving the police. Like, I have a very big interest in not involving police in my daily life. Well, that's good to hear. Now, <laughs> see... I just got to deliver a letter to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm Georgie. I got to deliver a letter to my friend, Lorley, you know? Uh-huh, right. Um... Which, by the way, uh, real quick, shout out to uh, LaureleyM412 on Twitter. Thank you for retweeting an episode. I think you retweeted an episode. Thank you. Don't know if your name's Lorley or Laura Live. We're going with Lorley. Um... Okay, Georgie so just calls her Lorley. Lorley? All right. That's... Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, que- so, question. You just need to deliver a letter to Lorley, and you haven't seen her in a while? Not in a few months, no. Oh. All right, could you uh, tell me when the last time you saw her was, Max? Can I borrow a piece of paper? Like a big girl? Are you taking notes? Uh, for the first time in my life, yes. Max is angry because today we have to sit extremely close, and it's like, this is the first time you decided to take notes. Yeah, um, okay, so you haven't seen her in a couple months. Do you know how many months exactly? And also, uh, where exactly you saw her last? <laughs> Fuck. Well, if Georgie's being honest, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> Georgie's never really seen, uh, Lorley. 
ages. You've never met her in person? Not exactly. Uh Uh-huh. It doesn't really come with the territory of our jobs, you know? Well, and what is your job, Mr. Short. Georgie? What the fuck? Who is that? Uh, Who the fuck is that? The receptionist, Howie says, as she pokes her head in. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt. Tea, anyone? I? Yes. Georgie, how do you take your tea? And also, what's your occupation? Where did you say you were from? Oh, me? Georgie? I'm from New Haven. And and what do you do? I work for my boss, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Sam Gior three two four two zero four nine five for uh, I think tweeting about us. Uh, this is your character, Sam. It's a mob boss. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My boss, Sammy Levecki. You heard of Sammy Levecki, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably a good thing then. Okay, great, because let me be honest with you. Uh, I've dealt with some stuff in my life, and when you came asking for me, I thought maybe I'd pissed off the mob. Have I pissed off the mob? (laughs) Not Sammy, you haven't. Great, well, that's uh, a check in my book for uh, something that'll help me sleep tonight. Um, Okay, so let's see. Um, You need to find Loralee, who you've never fucking met before. Um, I will. You know I she- will tell you this much, mm-hmm. right? So, last I know we had contact with Lorley was last year. That's not a Lorley few months did ago. A favor for Sammy. Yeah, well, you know, months, years, they change. <laughs> that they do. All right. Uh, he had contact with. She had contact with Sammy. When was the last time Sammy? I guess heard from her and. Where was she last known to be, I guess? Oh, Lorley? Last known in Sinzabar. Is that where oh. we are? Are yes. we in Sinzabar? We are. Okay. I'm in the right place, then. Yes, okay. Um, and what was the last thing you heard from her before she disappeared? Ah, uh, can't say that. Oh, okay. I will tell you this much, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. I will tell you. Uh, I think she was big in whatever community she lived in. You know, Sinzabar, small, right? Nothing like uh, uh, where Georgie's from, New Haven. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sinzabar's like a decent size. We're not New Haven, but like we're like a junior city. Junior exactly. Haven. <laughs> so people probably know Lordly. Um... It, probably. Did you know any place she frequented? Since like, a bar. Oh, <laughs> Great. Um, <clears throat> Dandy sort of runs a hand through her hair and fixes her glasses, and she's like, "All right, so she was last seen in the city of Sinzaba, frequented the whole city. <laughs> um, did she have any hobbies? She was a charitable person." No. That's how she gets into these favors for people. You know? She likes to help people. Illegal favors? No. No. It's okay. It's no. Listen, listen, Georgie. Georgie. Listen. She puts her hand down and she's like, listen. I don't give a shit what <laughs> illegal things you were doing. Uh, I've been involved. Not anymore, thank God. But like, smugglers and robbing places and all that shit i promise you sir i don't really care about anything except murder i'm extremely against murder and like violence unnecessary violence you sound a little apprehensive about that last one but sure i mean listen (laughs) sir i i i'm scrappy i'll fight someone if they fight me first anyway my, my point my point is Lord. It's going it's going to make my job a lot easier to find this lady if I have some like actual facts about her and not like what you would casually say to people who might be involved with the police, maybe? Yeah, I- Georgie, give us some casual facts. <laughs> Is Howie still in here? No, Howie's gone to make tea. So, okay. Last big thing I know about Lord Lee is the reason she can be charitable, at least from what I heard, is that she uh, 
inherited a good amount of money from a departed relative about uh, 10 years ago. So she's just rich? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, did she have a big fancy house? I, I don't know. She. You see, like Georgie, Lorelei <laughs> is a very secretive person. Uh-huh. You don't okay. really go poking around in her business unless you have business poking around in her business. Awesome. Well, let me ask you this then. Uh, where would a good place to start be? Do you have any other contacts in town who might know a thing or two about Lorelei, Lorelei or should I just like hit up the grocery store? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I already hit up the grocery store, uh, but we can <laughs> well, try it again can, if like, you like. Listen, I guess I could just like break into the police, just, like, the police station, and try and check their records. If like Lorelei was on their radar, they probably have some facts about her. I could try that. Well, that sounds great to me. Sound like you got more balls than old Georgie here. Oh, I mean, I just haven't been like. I don't really do illegal things that often. No offense. So to you, you just jump you... right on. You just <laughs> no, jump right on no. board to break in the police stations. Okay, you know, listen. <laughs> most criminals they like to keep low profiles, but you know, you a different type. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, go big or go home, I guess. You know, works for me. You got any other questions for old Georgie here? Um, yeah, uh, this is a bit crude. Uh, am I getting paid for this? Because I would prefer payment. Listen, when you work for Georgie, when you work for Sammy, you're gonna get paid. That's awesome. However, um, two things. One... I will I will do this for free even if you just like promise not to target my friends or family. And two, I also don't want to be in the mob. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know why you think that that I'm in the mob. <laughs> I am good at guessing. Well, it was a bad guess. Okay, oh, okay. I work for Sammy. <laughs> Howie pokes now, her head back in uh, and says, I brought tea. Also, wasn't eavesdropping. <laughs> but what are you going to do when you find her? Lorley? Yes. Oh, Not that well, I know what you're talking it's... about. I'm going to give her the letter. A letter. Shit, I, I said letter? too much. <laughs> no, Georgie can't even read the letter. You can't read the letter. Oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Uh, um, well, do you want to come break into the police station with me? <laughs> sure. Just, am I paying you or not? I mean, yeah, but like, what, am, what great, do I owe you I, for this? Uh, how about like, if we're bucks? factoring in the favor as well. Oh. All right. Which, okay. honestly, I don't know if I have that pull. Oh, that's okay. No, you, okay, you... I'll just say, how about 50 bucks uh, if I find her? If I don't find her, I don't need to get paid. Um, and uh, a maybe favor, but mostly I don't want to get targeted if I don't find her. No, no. Listen, you and me, this uh, arrangement we have gonna be off the record yeah all right i'm cool with that i just i, I have to i have to but just... i will say if you do find her <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe just maybe if me or one of my pals needs to go find a new person give you a call uh i don't listen i well we'll talk about that later okay, you know all right yeah no listen. one ever turns down old sammy let's let's <laughs> head over to the police station I would like to remind you that I don't want to be part of the mob. You're not part of the mob. I'm not part of the mob. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so the two of you, I'm just cutting this off right now. The two of you <laughs> head down to Sinsaba's local police department. Before we go, 
I write a letter to Louisa explaining what happened and telling her that if I die, I love her. Okay, you hand it to Howie. Oh, thanks, Howie. I appreciate it, and I pat her on the shoulder. <laughs> so, heading on down to the police station. We're there. You're there. <laughs> what? Who drives? Who drives? Real quick. Uh, I feel like uh, uh, Georgie drove his car. Yeah, Danny doesn't have a fucking car. That's fair. So, Georgie, you ride shotgun. Or, Dandy, you ride shotgun with Georgie. Uh, and before you know it, you are sitting outside of Sinsipa's local police department. Uh, what do? Now, did we discuss the plan on the way over here like smart people would? Yeah. yeah. What was it? Remind me one more time what your brilliant plan that you discussed was. Right, Dandy, so this was your idea. <clears throat> you got right. this. <laughs> All right. Here's the plan. I'm going to go inside uh, and I'm going to pretend to be someone named Alexandra, uh, who... And I'm I'm looking for my lost dog, my precious baby that I can't find anywhere. No matter how hard I look, I just can't find her. You're going to sneak in and you're going to fucking like I'll just like make the biggest goddamn scene. Um, if you would like to sneak in and sort of like find a record on Lorelai, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'm going to need you to make a giant fucking scene and uh, I'll sneak in. It just sort of depends on if you're in the mood to make a scene or if you're in the mood to sneak. I'm good at making scenes when uh, the scene involves uh, punching someone in the face or so this is threatening someone to punch in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right. So How otherwise, can... I would say old Georgie should, should do the sneaking. I would prefer not attacking the police officers. If someone sees you, um, just cry and say you can't find the bathroom <laughs> uh georgie quickly pulls out a switchblade and he, he looks at it real quick and he says so so none of this no and can i see that for a second bud no i got this and he puts it back hold on to it for a bit dandy looks at the back seat like she wanted to throw it back there and leave it for safekeeping in the car he no. pats it in his chest and says this is safekeeping. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, um, she. Li- I'm gonna leave my gun in the car, uh, and I'm gonna wipe my prints off. Uh, of it. To make you feel better, I'll leave mine in the car too. You reach in your coat pocket and realize that you never <laughs> actually got it back from Howie at reception. <laughs> God damn it! You know, damn it, Georgie. You do this all the time. Then you gotta buy a new damn gun every <laughs> week. Oh my god, Sammy's gonna kill you again. Oh, damn it. Dandy look, gives you a, a sad look as she places her now cleaned of fl- fingerprints gun in the glove compartment. I gotta get my gun back after this. Sure, yeah. Shooting people uh, is part of my not job. <laughs> great, I would like to remind you of my I don't deal in murder clause. I would like to remind all of you that we have a show to record. Maybe we should move on with the plot. (laughs) All right, all right. I say we go shopping. (laughs) Uh, You know what? I love shopping. Okay, all right. Dandy. All right, so are you going in to make a scene? Yeah, I'm going to make the scene, uh, and then I'd like you to sneak in after me. Um, So she, um, she like, rubs her hands against her eyes really, really hard. Uh, slaps her cheek a couple of times like she's like been, you know, flushed and panicked. Um, runs her hands wildly through her hair and um, puts her glasses in her pocket as she... Um, I'm going to attempt to disguise. Yeah, please. Ooh, guess what? I passed with a hard success. Okay. Uh, so you do a pretty good job of uh, mussing up your face enough as to be uh, as to be unrecognizable. Great. I. All right, here's what I do. <clears throat> I throw the door open to the police station and i scream has anyone seen my dog several officers look completely startled as you draw an enormous amount of attention to yourself i I point to one and i'm like you have you seen my betsy uh he like points at himself and starts shaking his head wildly oh then what are you doing your job all right, Georgie, uh, we're going to cut back to you as you uh, roll stealth. All right, hold on. Is there like a side window I could go in or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that. you know what? That's an even better idea. Roll stealth as you enter through the side window. Well, one of them fell. 
But I can tell you that either way, it was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, that might not be all you're about to lose as you open the window. Can I wait? Can I push the roll? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brett. You got this. All right. So Georgie opens the window and realizes there's a loud creak. And uh, Georgie decides the best option is to take it nice and slow. <laughs> and really, really think about his movements. <laughs> and he gets, oh, just shy of an extreme success. But a, oh, what's the one before that? Hard success. Woo! Success. <laughs> All right. So uh, noticing a creaky, creaky little thing, you uh, very quietly push it open and uh, stealthily enter into what appears to be a record room. Um, Faintly, you hear the sound of hysterical sobbing. Now, from what you can tell, this would probably be the best place to actually find uh, any information about Lorley. However, you do hear some footsteps in the room, and you get the distinct impression that you're not alone. Uh, how you choose to proceed is up to you. How, like, how would I... So, I guess, would it be, like, a spot hidden to find the the files or whatever? You could roll spot hidden. I would even make a case for library use, because um, you're technically looking through a whole bunch of uh, documents and files. Can I, um, can I go with spot hidden? You can, uh, but there is the other person in the room to contend to, and if you try any action like that, uh, you're going to take a penalty die at the risk of being seen. Georgie, Georgie can't do murder right now. It's not good for him. <laughs> I'm glad Georgie's like taking that into consideration, and it hasn't just been like, eh. It's not because of you. Oh. He got his own job. Uh, oh. All right. I hope, um, I hope Georgie's not like the FBI. Georgie's and, like, undercover. And I was like admitting to being like part of like a smuggling <laughs> operation. Um, damn. Okay, this isn't gonna be easy. So can I? I think I just have to go with spot hidden because I don't think I really have another option here. Listen, you can do but whatever you want. This is a tabletop role playing game. You can grow wings. Yeah, but I can't fart. think do of another. You want. Like, okay, all right. So, Beth, one of the other options I have is going up to whoever's in the room and trying to intimidate them. I don't know how well that would go, though. How How's your intimidate? Forty five. You almost have a fifty fifty chance. I know. I usually just like chance it, but I have really good luck. I'm. I feel like so. If I if I were to go a spot hidden, what like what exactly? You said I'd get a penalty die against what? Uh, so basically, when you when you take a penalty die, you roll your tens dice again, like the zero, like mm-hmm. the ten, twenty, thirty dice, uh, and you take the lower value. But in this case, a failure at, at spot hidden is also alerting your presence. You know what I would do in your in your situation, Brett? What? If I were you, I would try and find the file. If I get caught, I would be extremely confident and been like, "They're like, hey, who are you? What are you doing?" And I'd be like, "What does it look like I'm doing? I'm alphabetizing." <laughs> yeah, see, my fast talk is way, like the worst of all my. Oh, uh... uh, that's weird. Oh, that for... other than persuade, other than persuade, yeah. So fast talk, persuade, and charm are all pretty bad. My intimidate is my only like okay one that I might be able to use. Oh boy! Well, I don't know. Give it a shot. I'm gonna. Dude. So I think I think I'm gonna go for spot hidden, and if I get caught, I'm gonna try and intimidate the guy with my good. switchblade that I kept Let's on myself. Th- Let's do it. All right. Remember, please so, have guns. Uh, I'm looking for the spot hidden thing. That's a failure. All right. So as you begin snooping around, um, you step on a, a wrapper that someone left out, uh, makes a loud crunch, and a uh, young man uh, pokes his head around the corner and says, ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it looks like he's going to start reaching for his gun. So wait, hold on, hold on. Does he pull his gun, or does he just have his hand on his gun? No, I think he just has his hand on it. And he says, "What? What? What are, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, sir?" Hold on. All right. So he's gonna try to intimidate. Okay. Georgie's Georgie's gonna, just gonna look at the kid and be like, "How old does this guy look?" Uh, maybe like twenty-one tops. Okay. <clears throat> And you can take you can take an advantage or a, a bonus dice on this one. 
Okay. Now then, kid. Listen, I know this looks crazy, but I need you to understand that's the way things work around here. You're too young to understand. Now don't get in the way of the natural order of things. And I, all right, so wait, how do I, was it an advantage die again? I can't remember. Take do do the that? tens dice, roll it again, and take the better value. Holy shit, I just made that. <gasps> uh, he pales and says, what do you want? What do you want? I'm just looking for the files. What on files? The, on the Lorely. Lore, Laura who? Lorely. Uh, resident from, from Sinzaba. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, he wanders over to a, uh, a stack of files and starts sifting through them and says, she, she worked at the, the, the community center, didn't she? In, in her spare time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was some, there was some kind of incident th there a few months ago. Uh, and he pulls out a, a file and says, he, here, just take it, just take it and go. I don't want any trouble. One last thing. Uh, you got any files here on Sammy Levecki? Uh, he pales further and says, Sammy Levecki is a very dangerous man. Well, you know, we gotta make sure that we have all the information we can get. Uh, now then. I'd like you, I'd like you to roll persuasion. Here we go. Oh, that's a failure. I could. I am already probably going to lose my job the second they find that file missing. Please, sir, if you have any decency and you do not take the files on Sammy Levecki from us. <laughs> he pulls out the switchblade. <gasps> Goodbye, Georgie. <laughs> Listen. My boss needs those files. And if I don't get them. I don't do too good. All right, roll intimidate with a bonus dice. I failed. <laughs> I didn't hear you, but I assume it was bad. Uh, okay. As you pull your weapon on him, uh, he has decidedly had enough of your shit and draws his gun. Uh, and says, uh, very loud. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to put your hands behind your head. Uh, Dandy, we cut back to you screaming at people. You are starting to see heads turn towards the file room, uh, where it sounds like the beginnings of a commotion are happening. All right. Um, Dandy walks over to the nearest cop and snaps her fingers in front of her face. She goes, excuse me. Are you aware that I am good friends with the mayor? I know the mayor personally, and if you don't start paying attention to me right now, I'm going to have him come down to your goddamn office. I'm going to have him inspect every one of your files. Hey! You looking at me? Look at me! Where's my dog? <laughs> uh, I guess, why don't you roll... I do know the mayor personally. Persuasion? Hard success. Oh, God. All right. Well, uh, everyone turns their attention back on you. Uh, and meanwhile, Georgie, you are in a one-on-one -on -one standoff with the police officer. What do you do? Uh, Georgie starts backing away. <laughs> okay. With so the file sir, in hand. Sir, sir, I'm, I need you to put the weapon down. I need to see. I need you to place your hands behind your head. Sir. He closes the switchblade. <laughs> Can Dandy hear... Um... Wait, you know what? No, never mind. That's actually a bad idea. I'm gonna let Georgie. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say my plan was like, do I hear someone in the file room? But I don't want to get anyone else's attention in the file room because then I'll lose my grasp on the crowd. Yeah, it's probably for the best. So he closes the switchblade. He puts his hands up so that way the files in one hand, switchblades in the other, and he just keeps backing up slowly. Um. So I, I have a question about the, the layout of this room. Yeah. Are there like files in columns basically? Or yeah, rows, yeah, there's Yes, like it's it's like they're not bookshelves, but you know, like there's it's it's stored. Is there anywhere that Georgie could fit through and run? Um, yeah, you spy a gap on one of the bottom shelves that with a good enough dexterity roll, you could basically, like, dive through it and then start making a break for it. Okay. 
Uh, and if you choose to do that, I'm going to have you make two dex rolls. The first roll to make it through the gap, and the second roll to escape the station. Okay. Okay, Georgie can do that. He's going he's gonna to do that exact thing. So he's going to dive under one of the cabinets or whatever? Yeah. And then dive out the window. Okay. All right. Here we go, Georgie. So... First one is a success. Okay, cool. So you uh, duck under as a gunshot echoes uh, through the file room. Oh, shit. And the second one. Holy shit, just... Oh, my God, wow. That was a success. (sighs) And then you dive out of the window. Dandy, you hear a gunshot from the other room. All eyes are off of you, and they start running towards the file room. Uh, Dandy starts backing out through the door. <laughs> okay. You see a Georgie sprint towards the car. A Dandy sprints to the car. Okay. Wait, no. Dandy does not sprint for the car. Uh, Dandy starts, like, s- like waving at uh, Georgie and then, like, mm, no, I don't want him to stop. Just kidding. Dandy's gonna get in the car. Okay. okay good call. Georgie, Georgie, roll drive. That's a failure. <laughs> you... <laughs> He's slowly <laughs> out of the police station. <laughs> Georgie! Um, with like with the car sputtering. Can you please push that roll? Or else we're going to prison, dude! <laughs> Alright, Georgie uh, takes in his two years of driving <laughs> skills as a 35-year-old man. <laughs> and, and tries to drive faster. It was just a failure. Uh, the car sputters to a stop. You are not going anywhere in this vehicle. Dandy gets out of the car and starts sprinting. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, uh, oh, uh, he, uh, 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 Georgie hops in the back, grabs the gun. That she put in there, and then start sprinting. Okay. <laughs> Why don't I have you guys roll dexterity? I got a success. I got a success. Okay, so... Car stopped, you guys start sprinting off, uh, off into the woods. Uh, and after a few moments, you hear sirens drive by, and it does not sound like they are after you. In fact, they're probably stopped at the empty car. Dandy... Panting, turns to Georgie with the most, like, angry question mark on her face. <laughs> what did you do? Listen, there was, a, there was a cop in there. I had to fast talk my way out of it. Never the best at that. So, uh, things went south. I did get the file, though. That's awesome. We're going to have to burn it. (laughs) What? Why? Because I don't want that caught in either of our possessions. Uh, And wait, let's read it. Uh, Yeah, we need to do that first. Well, yeah, get the necessary information, and then we're burning that shit. Right now? Yeah, right now. Yeah, let's read the information, uh, and then burn it, and then go on our way, and hope to God that the police aren't looking for us. All right, well, what do we need? What do we, we read the file. What's it? What's okay. It the police report on Lorelei dates back to an incident uh, from around December of last year. Um, she would teach classes at the local community center a few days a week uh, for free, just like, you know, yoga, some some various uh, classes, just to like, it sounds like get out of the house. Yoga. 1920s <laughs> yoga. Did they have yoga? I don't know. We break so many fucking... It doesn't matter. Whatever the equivalent of 1920s yoga was. Yogurt. Uh, yogurt. Um, <laughs> and you see that the reason there's a police report is because during one of her classes, she actually attacked uh, one of the students there. Um, however, no charges were officially pressed against her uh and so the only real action taken against her was that she was no longer allowed to teach at the community center uh it also lists an address for her which is not too terribly far away from where you guys are right now uh it looks like it's 
<gasps> few streets down, uh, off the off the main road, um, in what looks like just kind of a winding street. File burning time, and I pull out a match. Okay, you uh, light the fire. Um, hold on, hold on. There's nothing else important in that file at all. Like, what are you looking for? I don't know anything regarding Sammy Levecki. You don't see any information about Sammy Levecki. Good. Let's burn the file. Okay, the file is burning. It's on the ground, on fire. Oh, my God. Forest safety. All right, no, I want to make sure uh, once all the papers are burned out, I want to stamp it out. You stamp it out. You've saved the sense of a local wildlife. I wasn't just going to walk away from it. Thank God. Um, okay, and when that's all done, like, I want to make sure it's all cold and everything. Like, it's not still hot or anything. Like, the ashes are cold. There's no chance of, like, embers and shit. <laughs> Georgie no, starts are... blow breathing on it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, and then when that's done, I put a bunch of leaves on top of it. So okay. I just spread them around. Yep. Uh, you mix some mud in, and uh, your fire safety has paid off incredibly today. Thank God. Whew. You know, I didn't want to have to record, you know, some sort of... <laughs> Only Something Georgie else. can stop forest fires. You see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, do you, are you guys taking the woods to get there? I would think so. Yeah, Danny is best, going to attempt guess. while they're walking. Danny's going to attempt to make herself look presentable, and she's also going to take off her jacket and um, like fold it up and try and like keep it out of sight. So maybe she looks uh, nothing like this the person <laughs> who was crying in the. Po- in the fucking police station. Do you want to roll disguise again? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm fine. You know what? No, I want to look like fucking someone else. Twenty nine. Which you know, based on my chances uh, of a ninety nine, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an ex- that's a hard success. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, you uh, you muffle muscle your hair. In such a way that you're probably not going to be recognizable by the police. Yay. Um, congratulations. George, George is going to try the same thing. He doesn't have the best disguise, but he's going to try it. Why not? Oh, hey, look at that. It's a uh, success. All right, Georgie, you uh, lose the jacket. Um, and uh, with a single tear flowing from your face, you actually take off your fedora and uh, <laughs> place it at the base of a tree. He's not Jimmy James. He's not obsessed with the fedora. <laughs> Uh, all right, you you casually put it down then. Um, okay. And the two of you uh, will probably not have the police heat on you. Right. Woo. Um, and cool. you continue through the woods to Laura Lee's house. Hey everyone, it's Max here for your regularly scheduled ad break. What's up? Thanks for listening to the eighth and a half episode of Status Quo, also known as This Isn't the Mob. Um, we hope you appreciate uh, this episode. You know, we hope you're enjoying it, of course. Um, and Happy New Year's! Woohoo! 2019! Make it a good year because there's, you know, there's a lot of shitty stuff that's going on. And it's like, you're worth it to have a good year. Um, but it's not going to come easy, you know? You got to you gotta look at yourself and you got to make those steps and you got to be like, this is what I'm going to change. And then you got to stick to it. Set reasonable goals for yourself. I believe in you. I'm getting way off fucking track here. Next episode is going to come out on Monday the 7th and should hopefully be the finale of Status Quo unless everything goes wrong again. Um... And if you're looking for someone to point fingers at, you know, for this week, definitely point them at Mark, uh, since he got the flu and then we couldn't get our equipment to record. So <laughs> just kidding, Mark. I love you. Um, anyway, I got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who has been, uh, tweeting and talking about the show with the hashtag tin cast, both on Twitter and on Tumblr. And if you're doing it somewhere else and I don't know about it also, thank you. Um, so many wonderful people that I, I need to put into the show as characters. Uh, this this for this episode we did Lorelai and uh, Sammy, um, and you know it, it's it's we just super appreciate it. Um, you know if you say nice stuff about the show online, <laughs> it makes us feel really good about ourselves. Um, so thank you if you do that. Um. Hey, Patreon. Patreon's a thing. We have one. Patreon.com slash TinCast. Um, 
is how we support the show financially um, and is how you can help us support the show financially. Uh, we have lots of amazing tiers on Patreon. Uh, we have a basic tier where you get an, an, ex- uh, blah, blah, an episode preview every week. We also have a free tier uh, just for swinging by that also gets you an episode preview. So $1 and up, bam, doubled. $5 and up, uh, you get about 90 minutes of additional content every single month. Um, we have one bonus episode and then one behind the scenes episode. That's right. We're officially renaming them. Uh, this month's content is actually going to be $1 tier um, as a Christmas present slash we had more scheduling problems. Um, so it's not the second part of Icky Pox. It's uh, another Beth adventure um, where Mark and I just fucking goof around the whole time. But it's a good time. So you can check that out on Patreon. Should be up now because i'm recording this on the 30th and it's going to go (laughs) up tomorrow so just gonna text mark real quick uh be like i know you're sick but get that shit done i'm actually doing it i'm actually texting him right now bam and then we have our critical success tier that's right we're still talking about patreon um, which is our $10 and up tier. And if you're a part of that, we thank you every single week during this portion of the show. And that's why it's time to thank Brent Abraham, Joseph Stowell, Alexander Getty, and brand new $10 and up patron, uh, Will Hallowthwen on Twitter. Thanks, Will. Um, and welcome to the big boy league. Um, Anyway, if you want to be a part of all that magic, that's patreon.com slash tincast. Hey, so we've been going for about a year. Um, we get more and more listeners every single day, which is fucking incredible. Um, and we are very excited to announce a brand new service. Um, advertisements. Holy shit, people want to pay us to say things on our show. So we're going to start doing it. Um uh, just as a quick basic rundown, um, we are offering two tiers of ads. Um, for $25, you can get a personal ad, which is like a friend's birthday wish. Shout out to your dog. I don't I don't know. Um, but it's 50 words and $25. Um, and then if you'd like to actually advertise a product, like a podcast, um, webcomic, whatever cool things you guys are working on, uh, it's $50 for 100 words for that. If you are interested... Um, in getting an ad on the show um you can email us at tincast13 at gmail.com or uh you can hit us up on discord we also have a discord uh i realize i didn't mention that yet but we have one it's awesome please swing on by check it out you can find a link to that on our twitter but uh i would like to tell you guys about a podcast it's called uh rolling for mayhem so here we go The world is recovering from the last world war. New races have emerged, life carries on, and people try to recover. Our heroes try to help with this recovery. Probably. Uh, They're trying to do something, at least. Join our heroes, Bentley the Gnome, Emily the Human, in quotations, and, good lord, Wajit the Dragonborn, as they try to complete the tasks ahead of them to the best of their abilities. The journey ahead is full of hijinks, crit rolls that have absurd outcomes, humor that leads towards an adult audience, gay stuff, and sometimes serious moments. So, join Maine in figuring out what these chaotic players are doing to their world in Rolling for Mayhem, which can be found on iTunes, Google, and SoundCloud. Sounds like a good time. Uh, so please, please give it, give it a, give it a check out. Check it out. Go look it up right now. Subscribe love them uh so yeah if you would like an ad that <laughs> sounds like that tincast 13 at gmail.com or uh, hit us up on discord and uh we will we will take care of you shit what else do i have to say oh uh hey rate comment subscribe to this podcast that's a huge help thank you but i think that's about it anyway um thanks to brett for stopping by for this episode uh i hope you guys enjoy it it's a super fucking ridiculous time and it's also really long um i don't know if people like longer episodes i've never gotten any feedback on the length of the podcast because i know normally we shoot for like right around an hour um but this is like fucking out there and up there a lot so if you do enjoy you know longer podcasts please let us know um and maybe we can hopefully we can try and accommodate that that'd be awesome for us to do for you um anyway though please uh get back to the rest of the episode um sorry that you know this isn't the finale it's fucking problems but 
we wanted to try and do something for you guys because you're worth it and also because we're committed to releasing weekly content so anyway uh enjoy the episode we'll talk to you next week happy new year i love you all bye Uh, after about 15 minutes of scenic woods walking, you see it. You see this this uh, magnificent uh, manor uh, looming on the horizon, a, a long and steep driveway uh, leading up to it. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's go and knock. Just, okay. Do you want to knock and then I'll be like hiding and back up in case something fucking goes wrong? No. She don't know what I look like. Right, I'm but with if Georgie, she's... she's never met me. Right, but two strange people, and maybe she's trying to get away from whatever you're doing. I know you just want to give her a letter. We could just put the letter in her mailbox. No, it's not that kind of letter. <laughs> can I have my gun back? So hoping you didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see it. That is my he... gun. He hands it back. <laughs> she tucks it in her belt, and she's like, "Great." All right, let's go knock, but uh, I'm going to stand off to the side a little bit and sort of just All right, wait. sure. Uh, so Georgie goes up, and he, he just, like, casually knocks on the door. Okay. Uh, after a moment, the door opens, and standing before you is a young man. Uh, he's dressed in a nice outfit, um... And what's peculiar about him is that he is wearing a blindfold. And he says, Hello, can I help you? Hey, I'm looking for <laughs> Lorley. Lorley is not accepting visitors at this time. Tell her, uh, I was sent by Sammy. I see. Will you please wait right here? I guess. And he closes the door, uh... Do you do anything in your moment of spare time? Um, just make sure the letter's there. So yep, yeah, you're, you're still holding it. Pat the letter, um, good to go. After another moment, the door reopens, and the man says, You were sent by Sammy Lee Vecchi? That's them. The man looks at you, well, doesn't look at you, but looks in your direction, uh, and says, Laura Lee will be available. I suppose. Would you please follow me? Let's go, Dandy. Dandy looks Dandy looks uncomfortable and is like, "All right. Uh Okay. I mean, also, I did help you find her kind of. Um I'm uh, about to get pulled into some crazy shit." He pulls out $50 and just hands it to Dandy. Dandy <laughs> looks at it. She's like, "All right, you know what? You got me." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the blindfolded man turns in your direction and says, I'm sorry, and you are? I'm Dandy. I was not sent by whoever Sammy Levecki is. I just was helping this guy, Georgie, find your friend, Lorelei's house. My, well, I suppose one extra person... Will not make a difference. If you like, she can wait outside. Yeah, she hey, doesn't listen, exactly sir. need to be a part of this. Sir, that sounds bizarre the way you have worded that. Uh, we're just, listen, we're just here to deliver a letter. Like, there's no need for any, like, weird stuff. Uh, we are We can wait outside if she wants to just come downstairs, get the letter, go about her business. I feel offended. As though you are making fun of my physical appearance, Dandy. I insist you come inside. Hey, sir, listen. Can you hey, tell hey, me? Hey, Dandy, listen. Uh, yeah, I just no, want to throw the... this out Hold there. On. What you... the fuck? What kind of. How was I making fun of your appearance, yeah, listen, sir? Listen, I just. I don't <laughs> are you, recommend. Are you mocking me because I'm a this woman? Guy. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> Call it, saying I'm a nag, that I'm judgmental, sir? I was merely in yeah. my... Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where this went, sir. Uh, I'm Georgie. Listen, I just, I just... I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I just don't feel very uh, comfortable being invited into the house with the way you worded that and then accusing me and then getting me to come inside some more, sir. 
do you not wish to partake in the lovely owner of this house's company? It is a real honor. Loralee does not receive many visitors at all. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dandy, you and Georgie follow the man inside of a beautiful house. Um, probably one of the nicest either of you two have <laughs> ever seen. Yeah. Not as nice as Sammy's, though. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe not, but still it's a it's a beautiful house. Um and uh one of one of the most interesting notes about it as you uh travel through it is that it is incredibly well lit. To the best of your knowledge as you as you just peer through, you cannot find a single speck of darkness or shadow. Everything is is perfectly and magnificently illuminated. I see a mole. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my <laughs> my one-off adventure. Let me introduce you to the mole people. Um, anyway, so you continue uh, through the house, uh, still on the ground level, but after a uh, decent amount of walking, uh, the blind man, or you don't, I guess you don't know if he's blind, the blindfolded man stops outside of a room and says, in here, if you would please. Uh, and he pushes open the door. Are you going to come with us? There's no need. Uh, and as you peer inside, you see uh, a woman. Um, she's facing away from you in the room. Uh, she has waist length, like long, dark hair. Um, and this room, just like the rest, uh, is totally illuminated. Um, the woman reaches one hand to her side, her left hand, and uh, just uh, places it fingers out and says, I was told there was a letter for me from Sammy Lee Vecchi. Georgie walks up, he doesn't say anything, and he just hands her the letter. Thank you. What is your name? Uh, me? I'm Georgie. Excellent. It is wonderful to meet you, Georgie. Uh, she cleanly tears open the letter, uh, pulls it out, um... Gives it a quick once over uh, before tearing it in half and says, Tell me, Sammy is operating out of New Haven, isn't that correct? Uh, yeah, and the surrounding regions, but uh, that's where they're based. That's a long journey from there to Sensaba. Would you care to join me and my associate for dinner? Your friend is also welcome. No, that's okay. I gotta go home. Listen, I was just told to bring the letter and head on back. I don't want to impose, and, uh, you know, I got a job to do, so. It is truly no trouble. We always seem to prepare more food than we are able to consume. I have allergies. I gotta go home. <laughs> uh, I, listen, and, I think uh, I had some... <laughs> I gotta poop really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I gotta make sure that she gets home all right. You know how uh, Sinzabar is a dangerous place. Yeah, exactly. Listen, and when when you gotta go, you gotta go. And I have a nervous intestine. I need help. <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, Georgie, I'm gonna have you roll persuasion. You're having me roll persuasion because you know I'm gonna fail. Yeah, wait, what about my fucking... I gotta go! <laughs> I don't think your excuse is uh, that's very a failure. Good. I don't know if Sammy Lee Vecchi would be pleased to hear that you refused my company. Well, you know, when you, when you put it that way, I guess uh, I'd love dinner. I am not part of the mob. This isn't so... the mob. How many <laughs> times do I got to tell you? My associate will lead you to the bathroom. Uh, and the uh, the young man uh, holds out his his arm for you to follow him. I take it. Okay. Uh, he leads you a few doors down, opens a door to a very nice bathroom, and says, "Please make yourself at home." <laughs> okay. I close the door and lock it. Okay. Then I try the window. <laughs> There's no window. It's it's an interior bathroom. Uh, I want to rifle around in their things. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you looking for? I don't know. What am I looking for? Um, 
something for self-defense purposes and or suspicious You have things. a gun! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm really against You can't murder. get much more self-defensive <laughs> than that. Well, I don't... Listen, if they're like vampires and shit, uh, I want to... Why would the whole... I doubt they'd that? have vampire, like, <laughs> killing <laughs> devices just lying in their bathroom. <laughs> Well, fine, alright. I want to search their bathroom for suspicious things. Um, okay, uh, Dandy, as you peer around, roll spot hidden. Hard success. Okay, you notice, um, there's a, there's a bathtub inside, and the... Suspicious. No, that's it. It's just a bathtub. No, fucking finish. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you do you want to hear more? I guess. Okay. Uh, as you as you peer over into the bathtub, um, there is an unmistakable uh, red like uh, stain that is just like on the bottom of the tub, and it is a nice white tub. Does it smell like blood? Uh, it looks like not necessarily very recent. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't detect many odors coming from it. Right. What if, what if she shoves her face up against it? Does it smell then? <laughs> R- roll smell dandy. Don't roll. <laughs> Go to 32. Oh my God. It smells faintly of blood. Uh, okay. I go pee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I open the door to the bathroom a little bit. Okay. Uh, you look, you look pretty alone right now. There's no one in the hallway? I mean, like, a few doors down is Georgie. Oh. You cut out for... what he's been doing. (laughs) You cut out for a second, and she was, I I just heard, uh, I go pee, and then you say, (laughs) you look alone right now, and I was like, I hope so. Uh, no, I mean, you, you see Georgie a few doors down, um, but you don't, you don't see the, the associate anywhere. Cool. I want to open the room directly next to the bathroom okay um it's the dining room i closed the door okay i will open the next door you hear from down the hall would you kindly not open all of my house's doors i'm not opening all of them (laughs) can i open it you say as you open up to a (laughs) uh a closet (laughs) is there anything in there yeah some coats i closed the door (laughs) Georgie, what are you doing in all of this? Uh, Georgie's standing there awkwardly <laughs> while, like, attempting to make, like, innocent small talk. Like, uh, <laughs> how was your day? And uh, the weather's <laughs> wait, wait, wait. been um, good lately. Way, uh, has Lorelei turned around to face him at all? No. No, she is still staring directly forward. Have you? Has he seen her face? No. Hey, Georgie, you want to do something about that? Georgie learned to respect, uh... <laughs> <laughs> powerful people when they they say when they don't want to look at you all right dandy i guess wanders back to the room where you guys are and she's just like okay so if we're stuck here because you're blackmailing us can uh we get this over with soon dinner should be ready shortly i apologize of course for any inconvenience to your day it is nice to have company that's weird, because when we got here, you said your butler said that you weren't accepting company. Yes, that doesn't mean it's not appreciated, of course. Hey, how about me and Dandy? How about we, uh, we'll go sit in the dining room, or maybe a living room, or something. We'll let you be, you know? You know? Of course. Please, make yourselves at home in the dining room. It shouldn't be very long at all now. How do you feel uh, about steak, by the way? Oh, I, I love really steak. L- I don't really like meat, if that's okay. I don't He, like, like lightly, lightly hits her on the shoulder. She looks at him with uh, a lot of fear in her eyes. Would you like a nice salad, then? I would love a salad, thank you. We will prepare you a salad. That's very kind of you, thank uh, you. And the two of you go over to sit in the dining room. As we're walking, I uh, grab... Um, uh, Georgie's arm, sort of like he's escorting me to the dining room, but I just use it as an excuse to lean in really close, and I'm just like, hey, Georgie, remember when I lied about having to poop? Well, guess what? Uh, I was in their bathroom snooping around, and I found a bathtub with blood in it. Like, blood, like, filling the bathtub? 
No, just like <laughs> like some nice blood stains on the bottom of the tub, and not even like a like maybe a like a like a lady thing kind of blood. No, this is like a blood, blood, blood. Well, li- listen, I don't know what Lord Lee does, but uh, you know she might be uh, not in the best of things. Just be no, nice, well, co- and uh, maybe listen, she won't kill us. Don't insult that's... her steak. No, <laughs> that's my question. I don't think. What if it's not steak? My dude, what if it's not animal? What if it might be people? Then we eat it, we be polite, and we leave because I need my job. I just want, I don't want to eat anybody, dude. I want to just want to go home. You're getting a salad. Don't complain. All right. All right. Okay. Well, if someone, if someone attacks us in this really well-lit house. Then I will blame your receptionist who took my gun. <laughs> Listen, how and then I will stab them precisely in the throat. Okay, well that that's well maybe we don't jump to murder. Incapacitation is a skill, and uh, there are various points in the body where you can just punch someone to knock them out. There are also various points that you can stab them and they don't attack you anymore. <laughs> right, but that's murder, and that's very wrong. Uh, Dandy, as you say that. The associate uh, swings open the door from the opposite end of the dining hall and says, Dinner will be served very shortly. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for the invitation. It's most appreciated. Um, and a few moments after he closes the door, uh, Loralee opens the other door the way like you guys came in. Uh-huh. Uh, and she is now wearing a blindfold of her own. And she makes her way over to the head of the table and takes a seat and says, So... How is everyone doing today? I've been better. Uh, I want to look around. Is there? Have we seen any stone statues since we came in? No stone statues to speak <laughs> of. I do enjoy how you were playing Monster of the Week with me, though. Um, but I don't trust anyone. I'm so scared. <laughs> I just want to go home to my girlfriend. Uh, I just told her I loved her. Um. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, the kitchen door is uh pushed open as the associate comes in. Uh, arms all full of uh various plates and platters. Uh, he places a delicious looking salad in front of you, Dandy. Mm-hmm. Um. And the rest are served what looks like just a really good cut of steak. Awesome. I wait to see it's if only, anyone's going to... How many people are in, in this room with us? F- There's four people total. There's Loralee, the associate, and the two of you. Great. Oh, I want to okay. take a f- fork full of my salad, and I'm like, Georgie, this looks delicious. Why don't you try it? And I go to, like, shove it in his mouth. But Georgie eats it, I guess. <laughs> I wait. He, okay. uh, to try and, like, <laughs> calm the weird tension that just happened, he turns to the other two and says, Hey, you know, you work together a lot. You know, you get real close, eh? <laughs> and then he just, like, <laughs> puts his head down and just, like, cuts his steak. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Um, I imagine that there is little to no small talk. I'm still waiting to see if something happens to Georgie. <laughs> no, Georgie looks okay. Georgie tries to make, like, small talk that will not, like, (laughs) be seen as him prying. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I like this. So, they've already touched on the weather and how their day was. Is Laura eating her steak? Yeah. He kind of just compliments the room and the meal multiple times over and over. Okay, good. Let me, if I, if I may, I'd like to sort of give you guys a little bit of a better descriptor of the dining room. Uh, so a large table takes up the majority of it, sits upon a nice carpet. Um, this, much like the bathroom, are our interior, uh, like, rooms, like, they're surrounded on all sides. Um, so there's no real windows to speak of, however, the room, uh, much like the rest of the house, is illuminated brilliantly. And yeah, that's just what I wanted to tell you. Uh, Loralee turns to you, Dandy, and says, Dandy, are you from Sinsaba? I live here. Have you ever been to the community center? I have. Once. 
What did you think of it? Uh, it was very nice. Uh, I did meet this one man who really didn't seem to like me and or want to be my friend, but... Uh, oh, you must be thinking of Chuckles, yes. That's his name? Yes, uh, Timothy Chuckles. Oh, boy. Yes, it's ironic because he hates everyone. Oh, well, yeah, he didn't seem to like me very much. Uh, he was, like, in charge of a line. Yep, um, yep. Line garter Chuckles, that's what we <laughs> called him. Um... Uh, Anyway, but yeah, I thought it was nice. Have you have you been there recently? No, I don't go there anymore. Can I ask why, or would that be too personal? I I don't suppose so. Um, at this moment, the associate stands up, uh, sort of like nods a little bit towards you, Dandy, and excuses himself from the room. I was once a figure in the community, someone who was looked up to, admired, and respected. And then I gave back. At least I thought I did. And then strange things started happening in the community center. A janitor went missing, and it seemed like nothing. But after he went missing, I knew there was something wrong. Something a horrible happening somewhere in that center. I felt it, Dandy, in my bones. Uh oh. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, you know what's been crazy, right? The the weather around here. You know <laughs> what I mean? Ooh, it's hot one day, cold the next, rainy the <laughs> next. It's all over the place. Am I right? It started as a feeling just that something was wrong but it grew and it grew into a hunger gross um do you want more steak uh dandy as you say that all of the lights in the dining room are turned off i pull out my gun you pull out your gun hey lorelei if you try to eat me, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Um. Whoa! That's that's <laughs> not an okay thing to say. Georgie, you turn towards Dandy and the darkness to say that to her. Um. And as you do, a large glimmer of light catches your eye, and you turn back towards Lorelai to see that she has removed her blindfold. Where her eyes should be are two bright glowing beams pure radiant almost like headlights piercing the darkness beep beep (laughs) (laughs) and as um these these uh illuminated eyes uh reflect off of like the glasses in the room the light bounces back to also reveal two rows of thin needly sharp teeth in her eyeballs no in her mouth (laughs) Um, I'm not looking directly at her. Like, I'm looking to the side of her because I still like Medusa. But, like, <laughs> I'm pointing my gun directly at her. Okay. Uh, she actually, like, jumps up on the table and is going to start running at you. She's going to start running at me? Oh, yeah. I'm going to shoot for her leg. Okay. Uh, and I believe that would be combat. What's your dexterity, Georgie? Uh, 80. Hey, what'd you get? I got a four. Okay. <laughs> Which I assume is an extreme success. Oh, yeah. All right. So she lunges across uh, after, like, sprinting towards you, heading directly towards you. Uh, But you get the drop on her with a quick shot. Roll damage. I got a nine. Oh, my God. All right. (laughs) You uh, shoot her in the leg for nine damage. I don't... I mean, you've severely wounded her as she, like, flies across the remainder of the table and crashes into the wall. Georgie, you are up next as the associate uh, bursts back into the room, eyes also now aglow. Uh, what do you do? Um, Georgie's gonna try and knock out the, uh, uh Lorley, because, uh, he still needs no, to Lorley's... finish the job. No, Lorley's she... down. Lorley's... Is she, like... 
she's not, not down down, but uh Dude, I mean, the associates coming at you. Yeah, but Georgie's got a job. <laughs> is Georgie's and job he, to his... murder if Georgie's job is to murder Lorelai and Dandy sees you doing this, like if she can like feel you kind of making a move for that, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna attempt to stop you. He's not you. trying to murder her, he's trying to knock her out. I feel like that's a bad plan, but okay. If he was trying to murder her, he'd stab her in the face. Georgie has decided to go after Lorelai. So you can roll uh, for your knife and you can take a bonus dice because she is prone on the ground. God damn it, it's a 41 and I needed a 40. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, she definitely didn't roll out of the way of that, but uh, you stumble through the darkness, um, which is, yeah, it's better with the eyeballs, but <laughs> not a whole lot, and you take a swing and a miss. The associate is going to come after you now. Uh, shocker, shocker. How do you react? I'm uh, gonna dodge. Okay. He got a success to attack you. That is a failure. <laughs> uh, all right, take a take a whole one point of damage um, as Lorelei <laughs> stands up and writes herself uh, using her turn. Dandy, it's you again. Um, how close am I to her? Uh, pretty close. I think I imagine you're still seated though. You didn't actually take the time to stand up. No, I didn't. Um. I would like, so first let me ask, how is the table situated? Like, is it four legs on the ends, or is it like there is a, um, like a large beam underneath the table sort of like separating it? Uh, four legs. All right, and where's the order, the associate? Um, now attacking, uh, so basically, I mean, you're all kind of huddled together in one corner of the room. Mm -hmm. Loralee, uh, who's knocked against the wall, Tried to get stabbed by Georgie, who is now next to her, who was attacked by the associate, who is next to him. So you're all in one big cuddle puddle. We're like we're allowed to talk without taking a turn, right? Yeah. Great. I'm like still got my gun out. I'm just like, hey, you think this is a really good idea? Like, this is you think this is a great idea? Question mark. Uh, Laura <laughs> <laughs> looks a little like questioning at you and says, "What?" I mean, like, in general? No, I mean, like, I, listen, I don't love murder, but, I mean, if you're coming at me, I don't really have much of a choice. And, uh, I got you pretty good. You seem pretty not great. We could just fucking leave, and then you could be on your way. I super don't mind just <laughs> walking the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Roll Persuasion. And take a penalty die. Okay. Um, well, I passed both of those. I got an 11, and then I rolled a 61. All right, well, so. 61 is your score. Um, oh, my God, no, I failed. I needed a 60. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe for the first time in the history. No, that's not fair. But for the first time in what feels like forever, Beth has failed a roll. <laughs> I failed earlier, and then I pushed it, and I succeeded. That's fair. Are you going to push this? No. Okay. Yeah, no, Lorelai's going to try and attack you again then. All right, I'm going to aim uh, to clock her in the face with my gun. Okay. It is technically your turn, but I mean, just as a reaction. And that's okay, because guess what I got? What did you get, Beth? I got a two. Oh my god. All right. Roll a uh, d6 for damage. Two. Okay. Uh, you clock her on the head as she makes another uh, leap at you, and you knock her to the ground. Uh, there's only the associate left, and Georgie, it is your turn. All right. Uh, now that she's down, he's going to take out a switchblade and stab the associate in the throat. Ah! Okay. Georgie! Uh, the associate seeing that is going to try and dodge out of the way. Uh, well, what did you get? I got a failure. Shocker. She he got a fumble. Oof. Oh. I don't know how to resolve this. Well, because he... I guess he but he must just stab himself with your knife. I would say one I of guess. two things happens here. He either, he either okay, this he goes to stab him and the guy ducks out of the way but in doing so clocks himself in the head on a chair. 
Okay, yeah. You know what? That's that's good. Uh, so he'll he. Let's see. Roll d6 for damage. Takes a measly one point of damage. Uh, looks mildly bruised on the head. Uh, and Dandy, you're up again. I look at the associate. I put. I sit on Lorelai's back, like pinning her. I put my gun to the back of her head. And I said, "If you value your friend's life at all, you're gonna stop right now." Uh, roll persuasion. Take the uh, you know, just roll normal persuasion. Zero. Five. Uh, he puts his hands up and says, "Oh God." <laughs> What happened to your voice? <laughs> I had some phlegm in my throat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ew. All right. Um, I take both of Lorelai's hands and I, I press them underneath my knee against her back so she super can't fucking move. Okay. Um, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to need you to, um, first of all, uh, Georgie, drop that fucking switchblade. You're not <gasps> stabbing this man. He uh, slowly closes it and puts it back in his pocket. Amazing. Georgie, can you go fi- figure out how to turn the lights back on? Hey, hey, uh, you, Mr. Uh, associate here. How do you turn these lights on? Uh, head down in shame. I can't believe you literally shamed my <laughs> villain into submission. Uh, goes, <laughs> goes over around the corner of the room back into the kitchen and with a click turns back on the lights. Awesome. I have one more question. What the fuck are you? I... I don't know. Well, you're gross. That's the answer. You're gross and you're mean. We just came here to fucking deliver a letter. I don't know what your problem is, all right? That's so rude. We're your guests. You wanted to eat us? That's horrible. You're a terrible person. We... I don't care that you're hungry. Go to the grocery store. Buy a steak. Eat it raw, my dude. You're so rude. What the fuck? No wonder you don't have any company. <laughs> I, like, lightly, like, ruffle Lorelai's hair, and I'm like, if you're awake and you're hearing this, this goes for you, too. You don't deserve friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, you, I, Jesus, I don't even know how to fucking, what to do with this. Um, I guess you have scolded my enemies into <laughs> submission. Um, shit. Also, I want to know what that letter said. <laughs> uh, no, okay. no, 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 no. No, no, no. We don't need to know anything about any letters. No. Hey, Georgie, listen, listen. What if your boss sent you here as, like, a sacrifice to Lorelai? Like, why else are we here? And stuff. Like, what For reasons. It, it, is, it is not my job to ask these questions. What is your job, is, Georgie? It is my job to work for Sammy. That's, That's my job. That's great. Why would, would you think Sammy would be really happy if, you know, you're, this girl just fucking ate, his, ate their associate? Well, uh, that's why. I was going to politely ask if uh, Laura Lee here maybe would l- write a letter to my, my boss Sammy saying, <laughs> A, I did find her, and, uh, and the B, that uh, she politely declines their offer. That's, uh, uh, that Laura way, Lee, you know... You- are you around? Are you are you awake? Uh, Lorelai has taken eleven damage and is <laughs> bleeding profusely on the floor. Listen, I'll patch up your wound, but like you can roll first aid. I'm okay. I want. I will, but I'm keeping. Um, I'm keeping her pinned. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't have very good first aid. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's okay. I actually already passed it. I got an eighteen, and I need a thirty. Oh my god. Okay, you uh, craftily grab a fancy dinner napkin uh, and tie it around her leg wound, uh, successfully stopping the flow of blood, at least for the time being. Mm -hmm. And she turns over and... (coughs) Uh... Ew! (laughs) What were you saying to her? Like, why'd you try to eat us? You're rude! It's a craving. Gross. Grow up. Listen. We only need, and she uh, points to Georgie, him. Why? It's the favor. Your favor is you get to eat Sammy's friend. Sammy wants him out of the picture. He's oh, loyal. You gotta be kidding me here. But an <laughs> idiot. You gotta be kidding hey, me listen. here. After all I've done, <laughs> all the things I do for you, Sammy, and this is where you put me. Okay. Okay, 
listen, listen, all right? Uh, this ain't the last time you all messed with Georgie here. And he just walks out. Great. This ain't the last time, as in they will mess with you again? <laughs> no, he will mess with them. Oh. I look, I look at Lorelai in the eyes, and I'm like, listen, you need to learn how to be a better person, okay? A lot of us have some weird shit that we want to do. Sometimes I just want to tell my friends to go shove it because they're terrible people sometimes. But I don't because I understand <laughs> the way the world works and you need to get on a, get on <laughs> the level of humanity. I don't care what you turned into. Wear your blindfolds. Get some sunglasses. <laughs> but you need to learn to be a human if you would like to be treated like one. Okay? Do you understand? I pointed the dude to him like, you too! Uh, he nods with, like, his, his hands up as if he doesn't want any more trouble. All right, Lorelai, Lorelei. Uh, she also nods. Great. I'm gonna go home now. Thanks for not poisoning my salad. Um, please evaluate your choices. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Georgie is already gone by the time you are done. Uh, probably off to go plan some sort of gangster revenge. Um... And fuck, I guess... Wait, no. Okay. Dandy looks at the $50 she's earned with, from this, spits, and uh, goes and buys $50 worth of flowers for Louisa. Okay. Um, That's a lot of flowers. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's a shit... The florist looks like he's gonna poop himself <laughs> when you... <laughs> when Wait, you... you know what? No, because you know what? $50, I think is like half a fucking flower store. That's a lot. We're gonna buy a buttload of flowers and also... An extremely nice um, dinner of whatever Louisa's favorite food is, and like, what is Louisa's favorite food? Steak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sort of surprised. Quiet. Just steal it from her. <laughs> no, I don't trust that shit. I was waiting for it to be like sleeping powder in there to make us more groggy, so that they just like attack us. That's why I was specifically like, I'm not eating this. <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, so you buy a boatload of flowers, uh, some really good steak that's definitely not poisoned, not that the originals were anyway, uh, and you have a really good night with Louisa. Georgie, what are you going to do? Well, Georgie's going to reevaluate the last 15 years of his life. <laughs> oh my oh, god! No! god! <laughs> um, and, uh... He's, he's, he's going to go back to the police station and get his car back. He kind of needs that. <laughs> okay. Well. I bet there's a boot on it. Oh, and then hold on. Then he's going to get his damn gun back from Howie. Okay, yeah, okay. that's fair. Damn you gun. and Dandy make awkward eye contact. No, Dandy actually waves at him, and she was just like, it was nice working with you. I he wish you luck in your grumbles. future endeavors. She, he what? He just kind of grumbles and like half waves back. I did. Hey, listen, listen. Don't be mad at me. I I did. Louisa and, like comes out and is like pulling you away from the dining room <laughs> while waving at a fucking Gerald. What's your name, <laughs> Georgie? Um, it's like okay, bye. Have fun. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. Tandy looks pissed. All right, Brett. Thank you so much for coming to this fucking ridiculous adventure. We appreciate it. Oh um, my god. Yeah. Actually, this is so fun. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> this was this was pretty damn good. <laughs>